Trump campaign filing a formal complaint against Amarosa Manigault Newman, accusing the former White House aide of breaking a non-disclosure agreement. I want to bring in today's headliner, David Bossie, former Trump deputy campaign manager, co-author of Let Trump Be Trump, and a Fox News contributor. David, it's been some time. Welcome back. It's good to have Thanks. you <clears throat> as our headliner. You been on to... vacation, so today's my first day back. Thank mm. you. Um, <laughs> back into the fire we go. Oh, did did yes. you have to sign an NDA at the White House? Well, Bill, I never worked at the White House, so uh, I, didn't, I did not. Then what about on the campaign? Did you have to? At the, at the, at the campaign, it was a standard practice. I think mm. that's pretty standard across uh, the board, whether you're working for Donald Trump uh, for president or most campaigns across the country at all levels. Okay, so Amarosa apparently signed one. She acknowledged that. Yeah, and then absolutely. I think she said when she was leaving the White House, they, they offered her $15,000 a month to stay, or, but she had to sign another non-disclosure deal. I believe she rejected that non-disclosure. But I guess the point goes to this. If you believe the non-disclosure is in effect legally, why not, why not pursue that before the book comes out and all the media interviews we've watched this week? Well, first of all, I don't think you, no one knows what's in the book until it comes out. I still have not seen the book myself. I don't plan on reading it. I'm not, I'm definitely not buying it, but I can tell you that it, it, you don't want to create a problem that if it doesn't exist, meaning why it, uh, go after her if you don't know the extent of what's covered in the book. Maybe it doesn't violate the NDA. Maybe it does. And I think that that's the reason that you have to wait until the book comes out to see what's in it. Yeah, it, it, now the question is, A, whether that non-disclosure agreement is binding, and number two, and, and I think Omarosa does have uh, the upper hand here when it comes to proving that or not. The other is, the reason why this non-disclosure they claim, the Trump campaign claims, was violated is because she is accusing the president of the United States of using the N-word. Uh, that would essentially be what triggered this whole thing. Well, first of all, that's just an outrageous accusation with no evidence, no proof, except for her rumor and innuendo. Uh, it, it, is it is unfair to this president. Uh, he is an incredible, incredible man. Uh, I've met him th uh, through non-political means, and he's always been an incredibly warm and generous person. I've never seen that side of him, and everybody that I talk to, no one has ever seen that side of Donald Trump, and only until now, when it becomes politically expedient to sell a book, does she try to say this. And it is, it's just part of the problem with our politics today. And it's unfortunate that Omarosa has just really committed, in my opinion, treason against the man who really created her, uh, and, and, and it's just unfortunate that we're she, seeing this type of backstabbing. Let's just get back to her in the Situation Room recording her firing and then recording yeah. the president on that phone call. I mean, she didn't break any laws, but she certainly, well, it would seem, you know, is definitely on the line here. Where do you draw the line when it comes to former White House employees um, doing these sorts of things? It's a national security breach in, in many this minds. Is, this is an outrageous violation of our national security. Whether I, I want to know the answers to several questions. One is, was it a government phone? Was it a private phone? Was it a personal phone uh, or some other device that was used to record these things in the Situation Room? So did she deceive and did she violate our national security policies, procedures and or laws by then disclosing them? So I think that's a very important question. And I your... think. Go ahead. Finish your point. And I, and I think that Congress, this is really an important point here. Congress can call her to testify uh, about these very issues. And I think that Congress needs to co very seriously consider uh, bringing her forward and making her answer questions under oath about what she did, how she did it. Because foreign actors could be at play here, meaning trying to listen to whatever device she brought into the White House surreptitiously. So there could be a violation that she doesn't even understand or know about when she was doing this. She, she appeared to be pretty proud to be working on the campaign, coming across a did. number of events and several yeah. interviews. Um, what was she like around you? Well, I could tell you, I, I, uh, I was around Amorosa during the campaign uh, a little bit, uh, but she had a, uh, a, a personality that was such a, that she was a bully to the staff, uh, low-level and mid-level staff. She would always, always throw out 
that she would tell Mr. Trump if you didn't do what she wanted, that she would go to Mr. Trump. She would always use that uh, ace in the hole, if you will, to play against staff every time to get her way. And I didn't work with her in the White House, so I have no idea. But she is the person that I saw on The Apprentice 12, 15 years ago. Uh, and always playing that game, and, and it just wasn't something that I was very interested in okay. participating in. Um, there's a big trial going on. I'm sure you've heard of it. Paul Manafort, closing <laughs> arguments happened today. Here's Kevin Downing leaving court yesterday. The attorney for Manafort, he said this. Mr. Manafort just rested his case, and he did so because he and his legal team believe that the government has not met its burden of proof. Thanks, everyone. He went on, and there was a few comments that trailed after there were reporters. Do you think Bob Mueller is waiting on a verdict in the Manafort matter before he continues or not? Well, it's getting very late in the game for, for Mr. Mueller. Uh, this is, seems to be his biggest case to date. It's really his only major trial to date. After, you know, two years and $25 million, we have a case that has nothing to do with Donald Trump. This case... His, Donald Trump's name was barely mentioned. The campaign was not talked about. The, the inaugural, the White House, nothing to do with Donald Trump at all. This was about a person who evaded the law and evaded paying his taxes 10, 12, 15 years ago of tens of millions of dollars that had nothing to do with Donald Trump. And that's why a lot of us in, in this town want to see this verdict come or go. But it just doesn't have anything to do with President Trump or our campaign. It'll be interesting to see how the Peter Strzok firing also boils down. <laughs> but, I mean, Mueller wanted to have this thing wrapped up by September. They ultimately wanted to have this wrapped up before the midterms. What happens if they don't wrap this up in time? If they have no proof that there was collusion or obstruction of justice, then do you just wrap up the case or do you cost the Republicans or the Democrats for that matter? Yeah, I think that Bob Mueller has to seriously be thinking about wrapping this up. He has to wrap this up for the good of this country. We have to get what happened with Russia, and we all now know and understand and take very seriously what Russia did to the Clinton campaign, to the Trump campaign, and to many state campaigns across this country in the 2016 campaign. We have to pay attention to it in, 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 in the elections coming up. But it didn't have anything to do with collusion. Uh, of the Trump campaign, and there's no evidence of it. It never happened. This president won fair and square. Hillary Clinton is the one who cannot accept the results. And that's what this is about. So the mainstream media wants to, they hate, look, the mainstream media and the left hate this president more than they love this country. And they are doing serious damage to this country, getting us uh, astray from what we should be doing and focusing on making all Americans' lives better. Let's see what happens inside that courtroom in Alexandria. Sir, thank you so much, David Bossi, for being thank our headliner. I hope you come back, all right? And welcome Thanks, back man. from vacation. Yeah, thank you. great yeah. talking to you.